Welcome, my energetic beings. I believe energy is the medicine of the future. How to create optimum vitality in trying times, even if you don't have time, with Tanya D. Thanks for joining me. To increase your viewing pleasure, turn off everything operating in the background, email, Skype, iTunes, or any other programs. Silent your phone, close the door, and give yourself this time to discover your own vitality. First of all, I am a holistic medium intuitively reading energy. I want to share with you some vital information about six natural resources we all have and use in varying ways. These natural resources are within each and every one of us. My goal is to reignite them for optimistic vitality for living. With that said, your body is not just made of matter, physical, tangible things. It is also, more importantly, made of energy. If this energy isn't taken care of, you could feel sluggish, depressed, have lack of energy, poor digestion, heart disease, moody, overweight, or even underweight, and much, much more. Now, I'm not saying to give up your primary care physician. These two practices work together in tandem to create their own magnificent healing world. Who doesn't want more vitality as they get older? Ask people about their health potential and you can estimate what expectations life entails for them. The crucial question guiding your years, in what direction do you focus your awareness? Survival or optimal wellness? A survival mentality is concerned and anxious about avoiding illness. It talks prevention. It fosters a lifestyle that is primarily defensive and overly protective, with a lot of resignation to aches and pains to throw in. Survival means you are worried about losing vitality. Choosing optimal wellness beckons you to open towards a quality of life, an ever-growing recognition of the availability of life's energy, where spontaneity, enrichment, and humor reign. It's future-orientated and concerned with the power, abundance, and opportunities of life. With the survival mentality, you worry about dwindling energy. By endorsing wellness, you discover how to stimulate your vitality. Do you find yourself asking questions like this? Where did my energy go? Why can't I perform at work or the gym like I used to? Where did this extra weight come from? How did my life get off track? What can I do to rebalance? How can I get my vitality back? Let me help you answer those questions. You are ready to reset your body so that you can feel healthy, young, energetic, balanced, and vibrant again. What if I told you that your body was designed to repair, reboot, and re-energize? By identifying and treating the source of imbalance in your body, you can reverse the symptoms that have been draining you. You can feel revitalized again, and you can have your living style back. Now, my beliefs differ from any out there, but in any case, different is not only good, it's refreshing. It all comes back to choosing your belief system. If you assume that birth has dealt you a limited amount of energy that gets used up as you get older, then you are likely to fulfill this restricting prediction. If, on the other hand, you gradually became aware that unlimited vitality is available, then your entire outlook, feelings, thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors authorizes a vastly different story. One that, as you grow older, is filled with fascinating chapters rather than a few scribbled pages. Improving living performance at any age is less a question of fate than shrewd decisions. Would you risk a little imagination? First, propose to yourself that you are a person with potential renewable life energy. From that power base, you can learn to transform your potential living force into usable energy. Instead of finding living increasingly weary, you can now find it ever more interesting. How? By accessing your six natural energy resources to increase their power to mind and body. These natural resources involve your attitude, the way you breathe, movement, your nutrition, and the way you handle rest and solitude. Practicing these six energy skills activates your vital resources, providing an influx of life-giving energy to think, feel, and do. You decide daily, after all, how well you want to be. So, how do we begin to do this? First, let's start with basic consideration. You are a dynamic organization of conscious living energy, a human energy field that can consciously interact with itself, embodied energy, not a body plus energy. Next, how can you access the power of this living field of conscious energy? Engender the vision to transform your current limits, get unstuck from the past, use stress to create self-knowledge, and reinvent a healthy future. Lead your own life well. Learning to activate basic self-care skills induces energy changes in the brain and body that trigger new potentials for self-management and self-renewal. This is more than just acquiring survival skills. Their creation and maintenance involves the actual upgrading of your life force. When you know how to expand and use your vital forces effectively, then you can raise the bar on personal performance, work more creatively, and enjoy a more fulfilling life. 
Accessing your six energy system doesn't work on its own. To get incredible results, the secret is to turn on and utilize the simple system. Imagine that you are alive, growing, constantly changing in the midst of a universe of energy. Like a plant, we take from the earth and air sustenance. We drink water from the rivers and sky. We transform the sunlight into energy of our bodies. Like the plant, we seek to flourish. We reach out to expand our roots, extend our limbs. We dispense the flowers and fruit of our life force to all of those who would gather beneath our unique shade. But in the midst of all the riches of this garden, some of us appear to wither and fade. Why? We all live well or poorly because of many factors in our environment. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the work we perform, the people whom we choose to socialize. These factors delight or oppress us, stimulate or bore us. The quality of their existence is vital to ours. One factor stands out as the single most important element for our state of wellness. It's the way we think about ourselves and our own possibilities. Life can yield so much more to us than we could ever imagine. Whatever our age or status at any given moment, life presents vast horizons of wellness, happiness, creativity that stretch far beyond the limits of our feelings, thoughts, and memories that even preoccupy our minds now. Who would have expected the political changes that are erupting throughout the world? Who would have believed that we could send images on our phone or even hold a mini computer? Who would have thought that people dying would resort to unorthodox measures like diet change, meditation, and positive thinking in order to effect a complete cure? But life is surely made of these abrupt surprises. Growth, change, and the willingness to risk mistakes means that we have the capacity to learn and implement our learnings. Life holds out a challenge to us, an imperative possibility, say, to draw upon its abundance and energize ourselves into a state of abundant wellness with all its complications. Promoting abundant wellness means the continuing self-realization of the human potential in body, mind, and spirit. It is the process of actualizing a body that is strong, fit, and pleasurable, a mind that is curious, balanced, and reflective that operates with and towards other beings, a spirit that is constantly and mutually self-enriching in its relationship with the cosmos. The Human Energy Field I propose a toast to change the common understanding of human beings as well as the way you personally understand yourself, meaning merging both your energy body with your physical body. What if you were totally made up of energy, not mechanical or electrical energy, but more importantly a field of living energy? What if your bones, your blood, your brain, your thinking were all pure energy with its primary thrust being rejuvenation and the development of ever-increasing knowledge? Well. Here's the surprise, that is exactly what you are. Your entire being is conscious energy. In fact, energy is the entire universe, and we live in a vast sea of changing energy fields radiating in time and space. Your energy is a special type of energy that has functions and properties unique to you alone. Your most outstanding characteristics are that you are self-organizing, self-renewing, and self-conscious. Even when you neglect yourself, the fundamental dynamism of your life force struggles towards the promotion of health and retains its potential to carry you beyond mere absence or disease into wellness. If this were not so, you would not heal your body or exceed conventional wisdom in any area of learning. You are an energy being. This simple idea is central to the development of wellness, yet it seems to have escaped the medical profession. From a functional perspective, the energy of your conscious life force forms your body and mind and executes all your functions of living. It also mends your organism whenever that is required. You can, of course, think of yourself as an energy being or as a machine. Your mind will accept either position. The consequences, however, are not the same. If you conceive of yourself in a mechanical static way, believing that you only have so many years of declining existence, then most likely your body will confirm your decision. Your behavior will match your thinking, your lifestyle, that malleable personal complex of ideas, values, relationships, and behavior will reinforce your added conceptual viewpoint resulting in a self-fulfilling prophecy. You will live a normal life of failing health, age when it is expected, and die of some disease at an appropriate time. If, on the other hand, you decide to restrict your vast potential to the limits of a static self-concept, you could examine the energy of your life force and discover it has an amazing capacity for renewal and growth. Your life will be full of surprises and joy as life engages you and reveals more and more of your potential. Most of us conceive our thoughts, feelings, and movement as random, unconnected expressions of our energy. We are not aware that they are all connected to each other in intimate ways. We see ourselves as disseparate parts. We are unaware that the way we eat affects how we think, that our mood changes how we walk, that our breathing alters our thoughts. 
we don't conceive ourselves as a unified whole being. That is why we are not surprised when we go to the doctor and they ask about our cholesterol and nothing about our anger. So, how do you envision yourself right now? Ordinarily, you take your personal anatomy, weight, color, shape. You feel, see, and think about yourself as physical matter. Set all that aside. Now think of your body, emotions, brain, and mind together as a swirl of energy. I do not mean that you have energy at your disposal. I mean that you are self-organized living energy. View your unique power of self-consciousness as a four that reforms, adjusts, and improves the energy of the body and mind. Now, recast your feelings, thoughts, behaviors, and expressions of your life force. See yourself as a being of energy, taking in positive energy from your environment and sharing that energy with those around you. Plants are constantly renewing their energy, continually maturing in some cases. Nothing about them is at a standstill. They actively respond to the abundance of life's resources within their environment. In the same context, abundant wellness for people is a maturing process in self-learning, innate control, and creative living that should never come to a standstill at any age. More than physical health and fitness, abundant wellness emphasizes a spontaneous and responsible existence that prefers, like a forest, to be continually enriched by the acts of living and bearing fruits for others. Occasional illness or physical handicaps can thus exist within the larger context of wellness. What I propose in the balance of being is that you can recognize the life in your own being and thus puree a self-conscious course towards abundant wellness. You, actually you must, rediscover yourself as a conscious energetic life force for the sake of realizing your fullest well-being. I will show you how to heighten your awareness of yourself as life energy and improve the communication between your mind and body for wellness. I am sure this description of ourselves appears strange only because we are unfamiliar with applying concepts of energy to the entire range of our physical and mental life. But once we allow our mind to adjust to the idea of ourselves from this perspective, a host of new possibilities regarding wellness spontaneously arises. When we perceive ourselves as essentially dynamic organizations of conscious, living energy, subject to high and low levels of its presence, then vast change is truly possible in the quality of our lives. When we think of ourselves as energy beings, we can decide how energy should flow. When energy flows properly, anticipated positive results occur. When it does not flow properly, problems occur. Place this process into the context of wellness. When your energy flows properly, you feel energetic. You go about life with a sense of well-being, balancing your needs for action and rest. When your energy flows improperly, you are wearied and distressed. You can usually manage to get through the disturbance, but you feel an unspecified sense of imbalance, of being out of sorts, and eventually you may have to curtail some of your activities. When you express yourself with and through your body, you are not only using up energy, you are also learning through that action what the energy expression means and does to your whole being. It is in this way that you understand and use your life's energies that determines how you continue to live from them. You may hate the activity or delight in it. That is part of the meaning of the particular energy. The meaning also has an effect on you both physically and mentally. If you don't like what you are doing, you will get stressful and tired. If you love your task, the time will fly by and you will feel calmly tired. You then feed that energy as information into your memory and future use. Admittedly, Climbing stairs, chewing food, moving limbs, all indicates the use of energy. During physical exercise, we feel especially energetic and remember that vigorous exercise uses a lot of energy. While we understand the term energy and these uses, we need to get closer to the meaning of human energy by revising an understanding of its metabolic availability. Not only in terms of functional use, but as it applies directly to the expansion of our body and mind. In order to understand the energy makeup of our physical matter and mental activity, we need to change the customary rules for describing ourselves as body-mind parts into descriptions of ourselves as self-manageable, systematic expressions of physical and mental energy. And this way, we can become what we want to be. This is how you utilize your energy body with your physical body, by accessing your six energy system. What you will discover, mind your matter, the magic rhythm, food for thought, action for awareness, don't decline to recline, and discover the world within, plus some bonus extras at the end of this webinar. Mind your matter, your attitude. Among all the elements that we beings use to respond to life, the most resourceful is the mind. 
Without the mind, we could not become aware of life, be emotionally involved with life, or take steps to cope with life. The mind is our ultimate resource. The resources I am offering you are messages of and for the energy of the mind. The mind makes contact with the outer world by using our bodily senses. It also projects its thoughts to outer world through the body. No two minds, however, will respond exactly the same way to the same situation. Even when circumstances are identical, the responses are often extremely different. Why? Because all sense data entering the mind is filtered through our own personal history. To be or not to be. People sometimes view themselves as victims of life. They are convinced that someone out there is the cause of their distress, the enemy or the stressor can be another person, an event, a situation, or even the environment. For example, that rude clerk ruined my shopping excursion. Or, why did my boss look at me like that? I've been awake all night. These people are actually victims of their own stressful responses. Think about the movie Mystic Pizza. The heroine unexpectedly spots her wealthy boyfriend having dinner with a beautiful young woman at a country club. Incensed by his unhealthy behavior, she angrily dumps barrels of fish in his prized Porsche convertible. Minutes later, she's introduced to her supposed competitor. It's her boyfriend's sister. The way you choose to use your energy of your thoughts or beliefs and emotions to life is the single most important factor in determining your response to life, as well as deciding your mental and emotional health. Your response to life is never just a thought. It always involves the energy of your body. You respond as a whole entity. The entire energy of your whole person is affected. The working rule, however, is that your body's reactions take their cue from the mind. The psychological and emotional energy changes to your response complement your state of mind during the situation. Your full response is thus a combination of thought plus emotion plus bodily changes. Our movie heroine witnessed the restaurant scene, felt betrayed in her heart, and vented rage with the fish approach. In her eyes, her display of misplaced anger was justified, but as the evidence bore out later, misplaced herself. In a flash, she perceived the scene, assessed it, and jumped to the wrong conclusion. The crucial question is, from where did her distress arise? There are always two possible answers to this. Either it came from the facts of the scene, or from her judgment of the facts of the scene. A close examination of the entire process of personal response shows that judgment played a key role. The magic rhythm, the breath. Everything we do in life is a potential stress-producing event. In fact, it is the almost impossible for us to not be affected. External factors such as the news of the day, inclement weather, an unexpected phone call, a child's illness, a friend's promotion, can all be opportunities for distress as well as enrichment. Learning how to live a balanced life amidst so many possible and actual stress-provoking conditions demands an awareness well beyond the need for repairing a computer. While we do not have to be immediately conscious of all the changes that the body goes through in order to maintain a balanced internal state, we should increase our alertness to possible stress factors. What we do not know about stress can and will hurt us. To deal with life intelligently so that our career and duties enhance or at least support our wellness, we need to learn energy-producing strategies that diminish the presence of severe stress. Without strategies, we remain too vulnerable before the whims of the environment, not all of which are beneficial. One of the most effective strategies against stress is breathing, as you will see, but let's take a closer look at stress itself. Life and stress. What causes stress, or what may be called stressors? External factors that are not necessarily under our control, such as events in our environment and people that we encounter, the variety of stressors is unlimited. While you cannot ever begin to calculate the external factors that could possibly cross your path on any given day, you can learn to manage your response to them. Management of response must become a major desire. I am sure we all get used to reacting in a certain emotional ways to our environment, regardless of the cost. You can get things done, get them done well, and even on time. Occasionally, you experience moments when you find your best attempts outstrip your body's reserves to sustain the effort. Your will drives ahead, but your body lags behind. You pay no great concern to that because when you let up, in spite of your exhaustion, you feel good. Meanwhile, the frequency of these stressful occasions multiplies and you find yourself falling asleep reading or watching TV. Headaches soon intervene in your day, patience with others gets shorter, and you reach for drugged relief. In a few days, the entire drama repeats itself. 
Stress is more than being uptight, occasionally or even having a bad day. It is a recurring imbalance resulting in the daily wear and tear on the body that leads to dysfunction and debilitation. It comes in different guises. Emotional stress or mental stress is the stress generated by our personality as we interact with our environment on a day-to-day -day basis, sometimes referred to as social stress. Digestive stress is the stress we get from poor eating habits. Environmental stress is created by such factors as smog, noise, and air pollution. The reason stress is harmful is because we are unconsciously creating it, and we become accustomed to sustaining it. Consequently, we accept stress as the normal part of life. The body is not a biological machine. We approach the pain of stress as though our bodies are chemical machines. For headaches, take aspirin, a leave. For upset stomachs, Pepto-Bismol or Tums. For emotional tension, Darvon. Depression, Prozac. For bodily pain in general, nothing beats Tylenol. Our idea to suppress by medication that part of the body that hurts. Some people even attempt to anesthetize the brain. Why not get rid of the pain quickly and conveniently? Awareness isn't needed. Over a period of weeks and months, we develop a conscious relationship with our periodic pain that builds mechanical, stressful responses to our living style. What we do becomes habitual, forming its own energy patterns, restricting change. Taking occasional pain relievers is not the issue. Incorporating them into your conscious way of living is. We inadvertently use one stress factor, the drug, to suppress another stress factor, the pain. Meanwhile, we lose the opportunity to learn how to use stress to upgrade our life. What you will discover. Breathing and emotions. Natural breathing and the three breaths. Moods and the breathing cycles. Nasal cleansing. Breathing versus stress. And some breathing exercises. Food for thought. Nutrition. Why do you eat? To satisfy hunger. To relieve boredom or loneliness. To experience pleasure. To increase strength and muscle. To become creative and feel well. Nothing else to do? Why you eat is a crucial question. Your reply to the question depends on your current priorities in your life, but will influence your future health and well-being. Whatever the reason for eating, one fact remains. Energy derived from food becomes your body, influences your mind, and colors your emotions. Whether you are interested in nutrition or tend to ignore its issues, the result on your health is the same. You get sick less from a lack of food than from the weakened susceptibility and low energy caused by a deficient diet. Along with proper breathing, the most important source of your energy is food. More than contributing the material energy in your body, food serves the development of your entire person, your thinking, reasoning, and feeling. If you are concerned with abundant energy, you must also be concerned with the food you eat. Even a superficial investigation into the composition of food will give you a clue to its energy potential. The physical body cannot assimilate artificial ingredients. It has an affinity for natural elements. We live in a time-centered society that demands efficiency, ease of preparation, and instant results. Food manufacturers promote their products on this compelling basis. There is even an advertising axiom used by fast food chains. They don't sell food. They sell courtesy, consistency, convenience, and speed. If you approach nutrition from this perspective, you can forget about wellness, period. The more you select food that contains preservatives, additives, coloring, stabilizers, and synthetic material, the more you subject your body to energy stressors and depletion. Artificial food products disturb the functioning of your metabolism, weaken your constitution, and interfere with your ability to think, plan, and enjoy life. You are an energetic being living in a physical body. Ingesting chemicals as a steady diet degenerates the body. In my experience, this is the principal cause of disease and senility. The more food that is removed from its natural state, the less energy it will provide and the more likely you will be malnourished. What you will discover. Why you eat, nutrition, food for health, stress diets, and much, much more. Action for awareness, movement. Your physical body is structured energy. Every portion of that energy contains information that feeds back to your mind. You can sense the temperature of your skin, you can feel the tension of muscles as you chew food, walk upstairs, lift a heavy box, or even scratch your neck. You can sense when you have extra energy and when you are overextended your endurance. Whatever physical activity you do, your body communicates its energy status to your mind. Since your body is an extension of your mind, both work in very close conjunction. What one does immediately affects the other. Your body is always aware of subtle signals from your mind, and your mind is always aware of changes in your body, even when your conscious, rational mind is not aware of them. 
Your unconscious mind is always sending and receiving signals to and from the energy you call your body and sending to your conscious mind. However, if you habitually overstress the body, accumulating patterns of emotional and muscular tension, you can eventually reach a stage where you lose the sensitivity of the body and mind communication. The loss of sensitivity is a compensation for the condition of stress. You do not think you are exhausted or stressed or even nervous because you no longer feel the signals of stress. Your body will even adjust to the diminished condition of energy, accepting it as the norm. Then you might walk around in tension, not realizing your mind-body distress until it becomes extreme, and you are forced to take notice when a serious illness stops you in its tracks. If you want wellness, the circle of communication between the body and mind must be improved and strengthened. How can you strengthen your mind's perception of the energy of the body? How can your mind make better use of that energy? How does the body improve performance of the mind's directions? This is accomplished through exercise. What you will discover, why you exercise, the body being made for activity, reversing the body and mind's amnesia, and types of exercise. Don't decline to recline. Rest. Centuries ago, a famous Greek philosopher remarked that the most obvious fact about life is that it changes. Upon this undeniable fact, he composed one of the first scientific treatises on the nature of change. Aristotle was brilliant. He never imagined the changes you and I encounter in our lives. The 24-hour last minute kind of rush changes? Our lives are changing much faster today than that of our ancestors. The challenge of change is a stranger to no one. We all experience change in at least some form. Without change, we would die. Our cell life is limited to the only few weeks of existence. Life and change go hand in hand. The more we connect with life, the more we are introduced to change on a grand, never-ending scale. Life's slightest touch can alter our thoughts and feelings. Those changes provoke emotions. Whether we like, accept, and approve a change or dislike, disapprove, and resist the same change, we generate emotion. Our language indicates this emotional contact. We say we are moved or touched by an incidence. The Greeks called this feeling the suffering of life. By suffering, they do not necessarily mean distress, but emotional change. When you contact life's events, the energy of your emotions fluctuates and you move from one emotional condition to a new one. Whether you enjoy a positive experience like laughter or resent a negative experience like frustration, the result is the same. An energy transition occurs. You feel yourself differently and you feel different about yourself. As the Greeks say, you have suffered. Change provokes stress. A mother suffers childbirth with mixed emotions. Her aches and pains and her joyful relief are inseparable. They compose a memorable, emotional, and stressful experience. At the birth, her months-long distress recedes the soul of the new life. Her body heals itself while retaining the memory of the pain. Five years later, she celebrates the child's birthday with all the neighborhood kids. The party produces excitement for the kids and a smiling pride for the parents. But everybody at the party feels emotional change. Sooner or later, the enjoyment wearies because prolonged or quick emotional change tires the body. With energy declining, stress soon abounds. The kids become whiny and complaining, and the parents too stop smiling. Stress ends the event. Of course, none of us would want to avoid stressful experience by denying the fun in life, but it is helpful to recognize that either change for the better or change for the worse occasions emotional stress. Living high or living low, being in charge or being driven, having a good time or feeling miserable, all accumulate their toll. Then how should we balance stress and activity? How do we help accumulated stress to diminish? What you'll discover, coping with empty energy, rhythm, conscious rest, sleep, and preparing for sleep. Discovering the world within, solitude. People have a need to share energy in some way with one another. For this reason, we form clubs, teams, committees, institutes, etc. Community is one of the most important features of life, whether it's a vibrant family or a dynamic company, Positive collective effort is always required to sustain the group. This measure of the collective effort directly bears upon the personal mastery of each individual. While communities need one another to act for a common purpose, it is equally important to acknowledge the source of each individual's personal power or talent. The empowering root of personal mastery is solitude. What you will discover, only the silent see, the gaze that renews, release of truth, therapy of suffering, inner journey to wholeness, meditation in the body, and more. Inside the Trunk
extras, choosing life and recreating yourself. Getting so caught up with our private aspirations along with public obligations, we forget our dependence on the energy of life. We occupy our minds with tasks requiring energy, but seldom pause to consider what it actually is that keeps us alive. We eat poorly and on the run. We subject our bodies to a great deal of strain with insufficient rest. We allow brooding thoughts to weaken our metabolism, agitate our emotions, and dilute our sleep. Instead of mastering life for greater enjoyment, we grope with life's challenges and find our lives discordant. Life's fast energy for strength, intelligence, peace, and joy is always there. Yet as long as we take life force for granted, we only use a small portion of it. Whether you are ill or well, whether you want more or less, your attitude toward life force is crucial for accessing its energy. The resource for either option is the same, the vitality of the mind. In the bonuses, choosing life and recreating yourself, along with concepts and ideas that we form about ourselves, we have another faculty that plays an essential role in association with our thoughts and emotions. That is the power of imagination. Since the energy of imagination interfaces with the mind and body, we can generate images that both symbolize and modify the way we feel and think. Tinkering with imagery can aid us in revealing aspects of ourselves that may escape mere conceptualization. How much life do you want? For most of us, we would like better health and more energy. Everyone talks about feeling better, but for many of us, talk is about as far as it goes. Some of us easily gloss over our well-being until a crisis strikes, then suddenly recovery of vitality is a most stern affair. Once we are well again, our concern for life energy recedes farther and farther from daily patterns into forgetfulness until another crisis arrives. Unless we get scared by the catastrophe, we do not pay much attention, though we are utilizing the energy of our body and minds. What requests do you have for your body and mind? At this moment, you are obviously alive, but consider these questions carefully. Do you want to feel more alive? Do you want to enrich yourself with more of life's energy? Do you want to know how to call upon unlimited energy resources for renewing your vitality? Would you like to be less susceptible to tiredness, chronic stress, and illness? Do you want to exert more bodily vigor and be less tired while you work? What would hacking more vitality mean for you? By more vitality, I mean having natural energetic resources around whenever you want them. Would you say these resources are priceless? Undoubtedly, but here's the catch. To claim your energy, you have to ask for it. Creativity is the power to induce vitality. I came from a space where you are a holistic, energetic being, an organic, intelligent, living energy field which can improve, rehabilitate, and increase your living energy on call. When we choose an amnesia, we steadily forget the truth of the living interplay of energy among feelings, images, thoughts, body, behavior, and environment. The mind has vast stores of creative potential waiting to be tapped for our personal and community or social benefit. As with other human potentials, creativity must be acknowledged and accepted in order to be made actual. We have all heard the word creativity used in many different ways. Artistic and business circles compete with words. The advertising world plans creative ads. Authors write creative cookbooks. There are creative cooking and creative decorating class. There is even creative financing for your purchases. When I speak of creativity for wellness, I propose a different meaning. Creativity is the power to induce vitality. Branching out and flowering, your relationship to life. When you use your creativity for wellness, you apply natural skills to yourself in order to induce new vitality. You not only restore yourself, you create rejuvenation, bringing into existence that which was not there before. Creativity is closely related to the six energy resources that I will be sharing in this course. The feeling that you invoke as you use them spontaneously increases the awareness of your vital energy force. With growing awareness, you are reminded that you can call forth the needed energy again and again. Your metabolism improves. You feel more vitality because you are more alive. When you consciously choose to invigorate yourself, you increase vitality, expand your awareness of vitality. Because self-care skills root you deeply into the energy of your life force, your mind and body improve their communication and open the door to intuitive creativity. Your abundant future of wellness resides within you. Are you ready to change the vitality of your future and be the optimistic being that resides within you? To continue on to create an optimistic healing venue, this eight-week course includes workbooks, meditations, exercises, and much more. It is an introduction to creating an energetic balance between outer and inner energy bodies. No two bodies are the same. 
You are as unique and individual as your thumbprint. Join me here to enroll in your personal energetic body transformation. What's the investment? $4.97 or three payments of $1.97. Visit www.club.tanyad.tv to enroll or enroll below. Take advantage of these great bonuses when you enroll. Besides some extra courses for your journey, including bonus material, 10% off at my online store, and free apparel as long as supplies last for the first 100 that sign up. Enroll now. Thanks for joining me. I hope I open the door to rediscover yourself as a conscious energetic life force. See you all soon, and be well.